it's Liv. Yes, I dyed my hair. Well, I didn't dye it. My hairdresser dyed it, but yes, it is a lot darker. Anyways, today I have a Thanksgiving themed video for you because it is Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. So I don't know if Thanksgiving is as big of a deal in other places as it is in Canada. I know for sure it's a huge deal in the States um, and theirs is a little bit later. But in any case, these are just awesome recipes anyway, just for like fall and winter and colder seasons. So that is everything I have to say for now. Let's get into the video. So for the carrots, you just need two medium carrots cut up and put them in a pot just covered with some water and then you're going to boil them. And then when they're finished boiling, just add a teaspoon of vegan butter, some ground ginger, and a tablespoon of maple syrup. Then I added a quarter teaspoon of orange juice and just stirred that all up. And as you can see, it's a little bit runny and the glaze wasn't sticking as well to the carrots. So I just added a little sprinkle of flour, but cornstarch works too, and that just thickened it up completely. So for these creamy, fluffy mashed potatoes, you just need four medium-sized potatoes and you're just going to peel them and then roughly chop them. Just like the carrots, you are going to put them in a pot so that they're like about half or just covered with water. You don't need to fully submerge them or anything. And then you're just going to boil them until they're soft and you can easily stick a fork into them. So when they're done, you just put them in a bowl with a little bit of the boiling water and that's just so that they're a little bit easier to mash. And then you're just going to mash them with a hand masher like this until they're as smooth as you want them. And then this is optional, but I added a tablespoon of vegan sour cream and a tablespoon of vegan cream cheese. And I use the brand Tofuti for both of these. Um, this is optional, you could just use you know, some non-dairy milk or something and that would also make it pretty creamy and fluffy, but I just love the tanginess that these add. It reminds me of a casserole that my aunt used to make that wasn't vegan, so I've tried to veganize it with this recipe. And then you're just going to add a little bit of black pepper and some salt if you want. I didn't add any, but some people like their potatoes a bit more salty um, and stir that up. So I kind of mimicked the Gardein turkey cutlets with gravy. I don't know if you've seen that product, but that's what I tried to do with this. So just take a block of firm tofu and then just cut as many pieces as you want to eat. And then in a bowl, you're going to add three tablespoons of flour, three tablespoons of nutritional yeast, some black pepper, and some sage. Then just dip each one of the tofu pieces into the flour mixture and press it down, make sure it's all coated. I didn't press my tofu or get any of the moisture off because this is what helps the flour stick to it. And I actually really liked how they turned out this way without pressing them at all, just kind of taking it as it came out of the package. And then in a medium pan, just add some oil or I mean, you can bake these in the oven too. I don't know how they would turn out because I didn't try it, but you could also try that. Um, but I just pan fried mine in a little bit of vegetable oil. And then I just let them go until they were crispy. I checked them a few times and then I flipped them when they were kind of golden on one side. And this is the finished meal. So I like to put the tofu on some spinach and then I have the potatoes and carrots and this gravy recipe, I'll link it below. It's not my recipe, so I'm not going to you know, put it in here and take credit for it, but I will link where I got the recipe below. It's super easy and really good. And yeah, this is how I would serve it. So you need three tablespoons of pumpkin puree, three tablespoons of softened vegan butter, 
a quarter cup of almond butter. You could probably also use peanut butter or another type of seed butter if you want. Half a cup of sugar. And then just stir this up until it's all combined. And then you need three tablespoons of liquid sweetener. So I used maple syrup, obviously, but you can also use molasses or agave or whatever you want. Then you need a cup and a half of flour, a half teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of ginger, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. And then just stir all of that up. I love this recipe because you only need one bowl to do it, so the cleanup is super easy. So it'll look a bit dry, but just keep stirring it. You want this to be a pretty stiff dough, so it should look something like this. Then I suggest refrigerating it for an hour before you do this part, but I didn't do that, so it was a bit harder for me to roll, but just roll half of the dough out into a thin layer with a rolling pin. So mine was really soft as you can see, but if you refrigerated it, it would be a lot easier. Um, and if it's too sticky, just put either another piece of parchment on top or I just threw a little bit more flour on it and then it was easier to roll. And then I just took this cookie cutter in the shape of a leaf, but you can use whatever cookie cutters you have, or you can just use a glass and make round ones, or you can make gingerbread men. Um, and I just cut out these shapes and bake them in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit for eight minutes. And I'll have the conversions for temperature below with the recipes. So don't worry if you bake in Celsius. And then with the other half of the dough, I wanted to make soft cookies. So I just rolled about a tablespoon of dough into balls. And then you're going to bake them at the same temperature for anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes. So wait until they're cool before you ice them, but I just used a basic vanilla icing and I'll just put a recipe in the description. Um, it's super easy, it's basically just three ingredients, but yeah, I just put it in this little, you can use a piping bag or I just use this little kind of decorating container, but I just did a drizzle on the circle ones and then on the leaf ones, I just outlined the leaf just to kind of make it pop so that you could tell what they were because they didn't really look like leaves when they first came out of the oven so yeah and yeah that's everything you need um, you can just store these for like probably up to three days in an airtight container I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and I will see you guys next time